Welcome to AWS What's New. I'm Jeff Barr. I've got one great story and three great launches for you today. As always, love your comments, love your feedback. Let me share my story with you today. So let's go back to 1968 or so. I live in this really quiet suburb of Boston called Framingham. I'm playing out in the street with a, a friend of mine, and we decide we're going to go back to my house. We're going to get into my backyard. We didn't want to actually go through the house, so we decided we'd take this little shortcut. We'd just climb over the six-foot wood fence between the outside and the backyard. We get most of the way up the fence, and suddenly there's this incredibly vicious dog jumping up and in my face, and there's teeth all over, and my friend and I, we both step back, and we actually both end up falling off the fence. My big takeaway, these dogs are just irrational, chewing, killing machines. I'm just going to stay as far as away from them as I possibly can. Turns out that my father was actually traveling a lot at the time, and he got this dog with the absolute best of intent to protect his family when he was not there. The dog was really territorial, didn't know me all that well. I got on its property, and away we go. Irrational chewing and killing. That's all I could take away from that. Many, many years later, I'm interviewing for a job at Amazon. I'm at the whiteboard. I'm writing some code. The, the binary search, the string compare, everything's awesome. Meet the team. I'm hired. So excited to start my job. First week I'm there, I meet this great new colleague by the name of Rob Frederick. Rob is a super great guy. He's smart. He's creative. He invents all kinds of things. Really, really friendly. So looking forward to working really closely with Rob. I look him up in the phone tool, figure out what floor, figure out where his office is, head for the elevator, step out, go through this little Warren's den of offices, find Rob's office, get ready to open up the door, slide it open, and all of a sudden there's this like elephant sized dog with shark level teeth in my face. Suddenly I'm eight years old again. I'm faced with the irrational chewing killing machine. This chill killing machine, it turns out, is Rob's dog, Nola, a wonderful black Labrador. She sees me, she smells blood. Rob puts on a leash, does his absolute best to restrain her. The fact that he's actually having some trouble doing this doesn't allay my fear in, in the, the least. We have a quick meeting and I'm just walk away super, super uncomfortable with the whole thing of like my, my lifelong fear has just been actually reinforced by, by, this keep, by this quick encounter. I really want to work with Rob. I really want to learn from him. This keeps on happening. But it actually gets worse. It gets to the point where I leave my floor. I step out on floor eight. The door opens. Nola smells me coming. She smells my fear. But not only does she get it, but all the other dogs on the floor. They get it. It's, it's Wi-Fi, it's dog telepathy. It's definitely not 5G because this was in, in 2002, but all these dogs are like barking in unison. I, I'm literally afraid to go out on that floor. I, I, before I will even leave my office, I'm like apprehensive, I'm shaking. I can just feel it like all the way in my bones. Like there's dogs in every office. One of them surely is gonna break loose. I'm actually gonna be dead before I get my first paycheck. Who's going to support my kids? Who's going to pay for my education? This is like actually my legitimate fear. I'm going to, these, this irrational chewing killing machine is going to get me at some point. Now, I actually have to go to Rob's office because Rob is creating all this super, super cool stuff. He always wants to show it to me. So I've got to actually go to his office and, and do the demos. A little bit of time goes by, show up at the office one morning, check my calendar, got another meeting with Rob can feel that tension actually building up, but sit down at my desk. There's a little brown paper bag on my desk and there's a post-it note on it. It says, hey, Jeff, you should try these. Signed, Rob. I think, oh, wow, he left me some breakfast. And I investigate a little bit and it smells great. And uh, then I actually realized that these are doggy treats and luckily I didn't actually have one. And uh, as always, I, I steal myself up brace myself, think that this could be it. This could be the time that these dogs actually get me. Up the elevator, out I go. The usual cacophony of, of vicious killing machine dogs. Um, 
this this to me is actually like scarier than meeting Bill Gates. There's no threat there, but these dogs they could they could actually kill me. I've got these treats in my my pocket. Kind of head over to Rob's office. Door opens. Nola responds as, as always. There's those teeth that they're. Th these are not like ordinary dog teeth. These, these are like th think of like prehistoric like eighty foot long like carnivorous dinosaur teeth. That that's like like shark sized dinosaur elephant kind of teeth. That's that's what I see. But I'm I'm kind of prepared this time. Rob kind of reminds me of of the the treats he he prepped me with. So uh, very very carefully and and using my 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 spare hand, my right hand, which I I guess I could do without if I if Nola took it from me. Carefully take out a a, a treat as I sit down. Very 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 carefully offer it to Nola because like I I need this hand kind of. Um, offer it to her and she kind of really gently just kind of scoops it off off my hand. And it's like hmm. This, this isn't so bad. And I offer another one and she actually has her fill, sits down. I actually, and, and may, maybe this sounds utterly trivial to you, but I actually like reach out and pet her, which like I've never, ever, ever done this in, in 40 plus years. Reach out and pet her and it's like, huh, this isn't so bad. And Rob is kind of like sitting back and kind of smiling and chuckling a bit. And suddenly he's like, uh, Jeff, we're actually here for my, my demo. Like stop playing with my dog. And, um, I suddenly realized, well, I'm I'm actually still alive. So a couple more years pass and kids are like begging for a family dog. So you gotta oblige your kids. Uh, we got Maggie, our first golden retriever. She was, she was a great dog, but now we've got Luna, who's like a super awesome dog. And it took me all this time. It probably took me close to 40 years to actually figure out, you know what? Dogs are wonderful, they're awesome. And kind of the, the crowning point for me, there was a point when I, I saw a dog at work and I actually went and I petted that dog just kind of without that fear, without that apprehension and said, you know what? I, I've actually gotten past this. I've, I've come really, really far. Friends, do you have an Earth orbiting satellite, perhaps in low Earth or medium Earth orbit? Are you desperate to get the data from your satellite? You need AWS Ground Station. This service is going to make it really easier for you to download, process and store that data. Now, you know, this is not a brand new service. We've had it since mid-2019. We've got antennas in eight locations, more coming. We make it super easy for you. You get your NORAD ID. Of course, you know the NORAD ID for your satellite, right? You schedule the contacts for when that satellite is over one of our ground stations. And then you use EC2 to do the command and control to get your data out of the satellite. Our original model, you just simply stream the data down to EC2. You can then scan it, filter it, process it, and ultimately store it. But we got a brand new model for you. Forget about EC2. You can store the data directly in S3. So easy for you to get this started. Uh, especially easy compared to like designing, building, and launching a satellite, right? Okay, so super easy. All you got to do, you create this thing called an S3 recording config. You point that to one of your S3 buckets. You create an IAM role so ground station knows how to write to your bucket configuring your satellite and away you go. We also have made Ground Station available in two additional AWS regions. To learn more, read the what's new and launch that satellite today. All right, let's talk about IAM. So I always encourage you to create some super tight IAM policies that have the least possible privilege. I think we talked about that a month or so ago. If you're doing something new, you're gonna use the IAM Access Analyzer to help with your policy generation. If you're going to tighten up existing permissions, you can use the last access information that we give you. So we started giving this information for S3 management actions sometime last year. And the news today, we're expanding this last access information to three new services, to EC2, to IAM, and to Lambda. You get this information for the management actions associated with these three services. So by seeing when these management actions were last performed, you can tighten up those policies, make sure that you don't have any inadvertent extra accesses that you really don't need. You can get to this activity in three ways, from the console, from the CLI, or by making a quick API call. If you're gonna go in through the console, all you gotta do, you find the policy of interest, you click on Access Analyzer, and then you look in the services column and you see the list of management actions. We're tracking this data for 400 days, you need to read the docs and find the actual defined start of the tracking period. The next step is up to you. Review this info, tighten up your policies. To learn more, read the what's new and check out the docs. All right, last thing I've got for you today, I've got actually two new books for you, 
both of them authored by my AWS colleagues. The first one is called Scalable Data Streaming with Amazon Kinesis. I just had time to flip through this because it just showed up yesterday. Kinesis launched in 2013. This book is going to show you how to use Kinesis by itself and with some other services. It covers all the things you really need to know. Kinesis data streams, firehose, analytics, video streams, and integrations with other stuff. Lots and lots of code, some great command line examples. Other book just arrived this morning, Data Science on AWS. This one's going to help you to build and deploy your data science projects on AWS. It's going to show you how to use both the AI and the ML AWS stacks on a whole bunch of different real world use cases. It shows you how to go take your machine learning models through the entire development lifecycle. It shows you how to build an ML ops pipeline. Again, tons of code, lots of great examples. I want to offer my congrats to my colleagues for writing, getting these published. No, that actually takes a ton of work and great accomplishment on, on your part. Not even going to bother to tell you where to buy these books, right? You wouldn't be watching if you didn't know that. And that's all I've got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed my story and the launches I told you about. Um, speaking of launches, be sure to launch a satellite and to use Ground Station. Buy the books, tighten up those IAM policies. I love all your comments on YouTube, so please keep them coming. I read them all, really appreciate them. Click through, like, subscribe, leave me an awesome comment. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.